my name. Hi, beautiful people. Hold on. Bring in YouTube on. Hey, beautiful people. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. All right, beautiful people. Happy Friday. It is April the 1st. 2022, day 70 of year four, reading through the books of the law and prophets, another four year consecutive day count, day 1088. Today, for the sake of time, since I'm already like 30 minutes late, we're just going to read the complete Anunnaki Bible, what we have left in the U tablet. No, I think it's, no, we finished. Oh, I'm sorry, we finished it. We're just going to read tablet V. Tablet V is. We might, uh, we might get through it. Yeah, we might get through all the tablet V today. All right, y'all. Yeah, so up doing stuff. This morning would definitely have been a great day to have uh, started an hour earlier, right? Things start coming up and just push time way out. So we've been 30 minutes a day. Rita, good morning. Levine, blessings. Demi, shalom. Ali, shalom. Shalom. Jasmine. Shalom, Jen. Good morning, Kat. Good morning. All right, beautiful people. Father, we thank you for another day. Lead us and guide us into all truth and help us to apply all we learn to our life that it manifests as wisdom forever for us. All right. Tablet V, Book of Variations and Fluctuations. And the, the subtitle under that is The Usurpation of Anu. And it has reference 110. He was usurped. Okay. The Tablet V series was inserted starting with the sixth edition of the Necronomicon and Anaki Bible and is extracted from the three year Liber C work released both as Beyond the Ishtar Gates or Necronomicon Spellbook 3, edited by Joshua Free and Kim Jurgen. These materials also appear in year in the year three Mardukite anthology Necronomicon Grim War, edited by Joshua Free. All right, so now it begins. Let those who are prime evil deities hearken. Let the great and mighty gods hearken. Let all those among the Anunnaki hearken. Let Enlil and Ninlil hearken. Let Inki and Ninki hearken. In the former years, Alalu was the king in heaven. Alalu was sitting on the throne of heaven. He bent down and put the drinking cup into his hands. For nine stars was Alalu the king in heaven. In the ninth, Anu gave battle against Alalu. Anu defeated Alalu, and Alalu fled before him. And Alalu went down to the dark earth. Down to the dark earth he went while Anu sat upon the throne. So y'all remember, Alalu, right? Amanda, shalom, shalom. Tiffany, hey, girl, hey. So remember, when we were reading um, the Lost Book of Inky and that fight that Anu had where he got his man parts bit off, that was Alalu. Alalu was reigning as king, so now it was time for somebody to challenge the throne, right? Anu beat him out. He got pissed about it, bit off his man parts, and his punishment was that he was going to be banished from Nibiru. They didn't have to do anything to him. Like, they didn't have to kill him because they said Anu's man part would actually explode in his belly. That's death enough in itself. We're just going to banish him here. He can wait his time outside of Nibiru. So, when they kicked him out, he um he he went out. Zoe, but Twabu, Tala, hey, girl, hey. He left out and he traveled and found himself on earth. And once he found that earth was a habitable place and it was really, it, they could live there, 
if you phone back, use the speaker, kind of like what we we call like ESP today. So he used the speaker from Earth, called back to Nibiru and let them know, hey, um, did y'all know there was another whole livable place here in our galaxy? And so he told them about it. Then they was like, okay, bring them back so we can hear about this place. They brought them back. And then they also decided to send out like this little tiger team to go explore Earth, right? And to see if what see what was and to see if what Alalu was saying was true or not. When they found out it was true, they banished him from the earth too. And it's like, you know what? You gonna go to Lamu. You be the king over Lamu. You about to die anyway, bro, but you're tripping for. Right? So he was kind of pissed about that. Um, but he did eventually die on Lamu. Yeah, girl, it was two days ago. Okay. Anu defeated Alalu, and Alalu fled before him, and Alalu went down to the dark earth. Down to the dark earth he went while Anu sat upon the throne. Anu sat upon the throne. Kamarbi gave him the drink of the gods. Anu bent down and put the drinking cup into his hands. For nine stars was Anu the king in heaven. In the ninth, Anu gave battle to whom I think I said his name wrong. Humarbi. It has a K. The K could be silent, right? Anu gave battle to Humarbi, the son of Alalu. Humarbi, son of Alalu, have battle, or they should be gave battle to Anu. Anu could no longer withstand the gaze of Alalu, and he dispersed up into the sky. Humarbi rushed after him and seized Anu by his feet and pulled him down from the sky. Humarbi bit the loins of Anu. Humarbi swallowed the manhood of Anu, then laughed and rejoiced. But Anu remained alive, king in heaven, survived by his progeny, Enlil and Enki. This is interesting because this says that Alalu's son did it to where, as the lost book of Enki said, Alalu did it, right? Bit off his man parts. I know it couldn't have happened twice, right? If it did, imagine how that must feel for and new to have that done to him twice. It don't say it. I'm wondering if it's um not necessarily a typo. You know how sometimes you'll read different scriptures, but if you read it like in another version, it gives you like a different perspective. You try to put it together, kind of like the Book of Jasher and um, the Book of Jubilees does with um the story of Cain and Abel. You know, so it's interesting. Okay, I don't know, but anyway, he got his man parts bit off. By either Alalu or his son. Yes. I was going to get a red bed, but Bill got on it. I was going to get a red bed to redeem something. Okay, well, we'll talk about this in a minute. Can I ain't got no much time this morning. Time? You know, we'll talk about this when I'm done. All right, the next section is called The Era Epos. Nurgle attacks Babylon, the Tower of Babel, the Epic of Era, Nurgle, and Isham. Era, rise up and march forth. Like a pale old man, you linger in the city. Like a crying child, you linger in the house. Arise, hero, ride the plains. All men and beasts shall lay low. The gods will hear and dismay. The kings will hear and be afraid. The demons will hear and be terrified. The mighty among men will hear and quake. The towering mountains shall hear and tremble. The wide sea will hear and be swept away. Era, hear this. I have said the words. Taut is the bow and sharp is the arrow. The sword is drawn out for slaughter. Era called to his torch, his vizier, Isham. Open the path to me. I wish to take the road. Sibi, the hero unrivaled, will march at my side. And you, Isham, my guide, shall guard or walk behind me. Isham was saddened at these words. Isham took pity and said, Lord Era, against God and king, you have planned evil. To destroy all the world you have planned. To destroy all the world is an evil plan. Will you not turn back? Era opened his mouth to Isham. Silence, you Isham. You listen to me. I will tell you of humans and their fate. My guide, guide to the gods. You Isham, hear my words. In the heavens... I am a wild ox, and on earth, the lion, and on land, a king. Among the gods, I am mighty among the Ejiji. 
I am valiant among the Anunnaki. I am powerful because humans did not fear my words. You're going to have to wait till I'm done so I can count it for you. Because humans did not fear my words and heeded the words of Marduk, but acted according to my heart. I will arouse Marduk, the princely one. I will summon him forth from his home, and I will destroy man. Era set his face toward Babylon. To the gates of Babylon he set his feet. Era planted his feet in Babylon, the city of Marduk, king of the gods. To the east of Gila, home of Marduk, Era entered. To Marduk, the god, Era spoke. My lord, the nimbus, the symbol of your lordship in Babylon, exceeding in brightness like a heavenly star, now darkened is its light. The crown of your kingship in Babylon has been cast down. March away from your dwelling place. Leave your people, your shrine temple, and set your face to the west, to the mountains of the gods, the fire that purifies your garments. Marduk, Lord of Babylon, to Era said, If I leave Babylon, my legacy on earth will be destroyed. If I leave Babylon, my home in the East Agila, great chaos will rise up on earth. The evil winds, the evil demons, and evil spirits of the underworld, they will rise up and devour the living. All living creatures on earth will they kill, with none to turn them back. I said, leave that alone. Era responded to Marduk, that is why I have come, my lord. Take care of things in your absence. I promise that none shall suffer and wake. I will see to it that neither beast nor field is harmed. No harm shall come to the earth, whether by heavenly gods or underworld demons. To this I promise, my lord Marduk. Marduk left through the gates of Babylon. To maintain his lordship in Babylon, Marduk left for the god mountain. When the god was no longer seen from the heights of the Isagila, Era called to Isham, Open the gate, for I am leaving on the road. The day has come and the hour is past. I will speak and the sun will drop its rays before me. I will cover the darkness with the face of the day. He who was born on the day of rain shall be buried on the day on a day of thirst. He who went forth on a fertile path will return on a road of barren dust. I speak unto the king of the gods. Come forth not from the house you enter. Faithfully, I will carry out your commands. When the Babylonians, or and in parentheses, the Babylonians are also known as the Akkadians. When the Babylonians, Akkadians, cry out to you, O Lord, do not hear their prayers. I will put an end to all habitation. Their homes turn to barren mounds. I will empty out all the cities and turn them into ghostly ruins. I will destroy the mountains and its life, the flocks and grazing beasts slain. I will cause the seas to convulse and destroy the fertility it brings. I will uproot the marsh and the forest and crush the mighty existences. I will lay humans down and annihilate all living creatures. Isham stood by and listened to Era speak the doom of humanity. Isham became filled with pity for humanity and said, Lord Era, against God and King, you have planned evil to destroy all the world you have planned. To destroy all the world is an evil plan. Will you not end this horror? Era listened not. Era first stopped the waters in Babylon. Then he emptied the homes of Babylon. Then he emptied the streets of Babylon. He then brought down the walls of Babylon. He then brought down the gates of Babylon. He then annihilated the fields of Babylon. He then annihilated the people of Babylon. Era stood and looked at his work. Satisfied with the destruction of Babylon, Era planted his gaze toward Erech, saying, I am coming for you, Erech. Erech, the wicked city of sinners. Erech, the evil city of Sodomites. Erech, the awful city of eunuchs in service to Inanna Ishtar. Erech, the lustful city of sacred prostitutes, whose husbands are the merrymakers of Inna, temple shrine of Inanna. Tablet break. Leaving Erech now in ruin, Era still felt no peace, no rest, saying in his heart, I shall slaughter the multitudes with a vengeance. I shall kill the son and the father and will have to bury him. 
I shall kill the father, and there shall be none to bury him. Whoever has made themselves a house, saying, This is my chamber of rest, that I have made myself a place of peace. When the spirits carry me at my death, here I will be laying. Him shall I put immediately to death, destroying his chamber of rest. And after it is ruined, I shall discard it to another. Isham listened to this evil and was dismayed, pleading with Era, saying, Mighty Era, the righteous of the world you have put to death, the unrighteous of the world you have put to death, those who have sinned you have put to death, those who have sinned not you have put to death, those who burnt proper offerings to the gods you have put to death, the king and his court you have put to death, the elders of the assemblies you have put to death, the young maidens and princes you have put to death. And yet you refuse to rest and find peace. You stand there saying in your heart, I shall crush the mighty and lay low the weak. I shall slay the leader and his host and make the host turn back. I shall destroy the tower and wall and remove the wealth of the city. I shall rip out the mast and the ship will be lost. I shall break its beams and it will not reach the shore. I shall tear apart its cables and shred its flag. I shall empty the breast so the baby shall not live. I shall dry up all the springs and so the river will yield no fertility. I shall make the plants fall. I shall make the planets fall from the sky and so the stars will be untended. I shall tear out the roots of the trees and so no fruits shall grow. I shall rip out the foundations, and so the walls of all cities crumble. To the home of the king of the gods, I shall take from my own. There is none that can oppose me. The mighty era listened to Isham. The words of Isham soothed his heart. He considered the Akkadians of Babylon and gave a moment of hope for humanity, saying, The sea lander and the Subarian, the Assyrian and the Elamite, the Kassite and the Sutane, the Gutain and the Lu, the Lulamain, land and city, house will attack house, brother will not spare brother, they will all kill one another, and then will the Akkadians rise up and subdue them all. These words found Era and Isham at rest. The anger toward humanity now soothed in the heart of Era. Evil destruction, total annihilation, the wicked plan did Isham end. To peaceful Isham did Era speak. The people of the land, now few, will again turn to many. Both short and tall will set to the roads. The Akkadians will capture over the mighty. To Babylon the treasures will be restored. The irate gods of the land, now appeased, will again come into their dwellings. Cattle and grain will again prosper in the land. The fields which have now been laid desolate, they will make again to earn produce. All of the mighty from all of the cities will pay tribute to Babylon. The eager and temples now destroyed like the rising sun. Their peaks shall shine forth again. The Tigris and the Euphrates, they will overflow with fertile waters. And unto the end of days, a new Babylon will rule all the world. Okay. Next section is Epilogos of Isham. I, Isham, account for these words. I have set them down on this tablet. For the glory of error, I have set down this song. May it be sung until the end of days to my Lord. I have set down my account of my Lord and how he may become angry with humans. I have shown his name to be the devastation of the lands. I have revealed the evil plan to blot out the existence of all humanity and how the soothing words of I, Isham, have brought peace to the heart of my Lord, how Isham, his counselor, did pacify the unrest in his Lord's heart, and how a remnant of hope was saved for the god Marduk and his son Nabu, the tablet keeper. I reveal these things to you as a vision of the night, and when I had awoken from this dream, I set it down for you without changing a word or a line. The Anzu and Ninurta Cycle, Tablet 1. I seen the superb son of the king of populated lands. 
I praise Suburb Ninurta, beloved of Mommy, the powerful God, son of Enlil, Iku's child, leader of the Anunnaki, focus of the eye of Inunu, who waters cattle pens, irrigated gardens and ponds in country and town, flood wave of battles, who darkens the sash warrior, the fiercest Galu demons through tireless fear his, I'm sorry, though tireless fear his attack. Listen to the praise of the powerful one's strength, who subdued, who bound the mountain of stones in his fury, who conquered soaring Anzu with his weapon, who slew the bull man inside the sea. Strong warrior who slays with his weapon, powerful one who was quick to form a battle array. Until now, no Dias has been created for the Ejiji. The Ejiji would assemble for their Enlil power. Rivers were formed, the Tigris and the Euphrates, but springs had not yet sent their waters to the land. Seas were not yet fertile. Mom, Clouds were still far away Mom, on the horizon. Yes. You forgot to braid my hair. Uh, yeah, I didn't braid it last night. We'll do it today, too. All the Ejiji had gathered to Enlil, their father, oh. warrior of the gods. They, his sons, bore a report. Then it has significant tablet loss. Then it picks back up. He studied Anzu closely. Then it has dot, dot, dot. It's missing some words on this line. He considered dot, dot, dot. I mean, it's also missing words. Who gave birth to this creature? Why is this creature alive? Yes, babe. Go ahead. Inky answered his heart searching. The far-sighted one addressed his words to Enlil. Surely water of the spate, the god Anzu, holy water of the gods of Abzu, broad, dark earth, must have conceived him, and he was born from the mountain rocks. You have looked at Anzu himself, then words are missing. Let him serve you and never cease. In the hall, let him bar the way to the inmost chamber forever. Then it says several lines, unreadable text. Words spoken to him, words are missing. Enlil took a cult center, words are missing. He administered the orders of all the gods. He decreed an extra fate, and Anu administered it. Enlil appointed him to the entrance of the chamber, which he had perfected. He would bathe in holy water in his presence. His eyes would gaze at the trappings of Enlil. Bella. Okay, you asked for it. Learn how to open it up, or you're going to have to wait till I'm done. All right? Mom, all the videos are one hour long. No, it's only going to be 30 minutes today. We're almost done. I literally have about eight minutes left. Take this over there. No, take this over there. Take that over there. Take that over there. Take that lock. Look. Isaiah, shush. I'm trying to get through this, y'all. Mom, shalom, shalom. Okay. And he administered the orders of all the gods. He decreed an extra fate, and Anzu administered it. Enlil appointed him to the entrance of the chamber, which he had perfected. He would bathe in holy water in his presence. His eyes would gaze at the trappings of Enlil's ship. His lordly crown, his robe of divinity, the tablet of destinies in his hand, Anzu gazed and fixed his purpose to usurp the Enlil ship. Anzu often gazed at Durankis, God, father of the gods, and fixed his purpose to, us to usurp the Enlil power. I shall take the Anunnaki tablets of destinies for myself and control the orders for all the gods and shall possess the throne and be master of the rites. I shall direct every one of the Ejiji. He plotted opposition in his heart and at the chamber's entrance from which he often gazed, he waited for the start of the day when Enlil was bathing in the holy water. He stripped and with his crown laid down on the throne. He gave the tablet of destinies for himself, took away the Enlil power, and the rites were abandoned. Anzu flew off and went into dot, dot, dot. Those words are missing off that line. Radiance faded. Silence reigned. Father Enlil, their counselor, was dumbstruck, for he had stripped the chamber of its radiance. The gods of the land searched high and low for a solution. 
And remember, the tablet of destinies is kind of like what we read in scripture, the um the the priest's breastplate with the different jewels in there, right? The the breastplate, which they would um what is it called? The um it's right down the top of my tongue, y'all. You got the ble the breastplate and the uh the urine and the thumen, right? So this is kind of like what the tablets of destinies was. So anytime something was going on, if you remember from the lost book of Enki, they would go consult the tablet of destinies. Okay. Just a quick recap, just in case you forgot. Okay. The gods of the land searched high and low for a solution. And who made his voice heard and spoke, addressing the Anunnaki, his sons, whichever God slays Anzu, will make our name great in all populated lands. They called the canal controller, son of Anu, the decision maker, spoke for him. They called Adad, the canal controller, son of Anu, the decision maker, spoke of him. Powerful Adad, ferocious Adad, your attack cannot be deflected. Your name shall be great in the Anunnaki assembly. You shall have no rival among the gods, your brothers. Then surely shall shrines be created. Establish your cult centers all over the four quarters. Your cult centers shall enter the eker. Show prowess to the gods, and your name shall be powerful. Adad answered the speech, addressing his words to Anu, his father. Father, who could rush off? to an inaccessible mountain. He has taken away the Enlil ship and the rites are abandoned. Anzi flew off and went into hiding and his utterance is replaced. I'm sorry. His utterance has replaced that of the Duranki's God. He has only to command and whoever he curses turns to clay. At his utterance, the gods must now tremble. He turned away, saying that he would not make the expedition. They called to Gibil Gira, son of Ani Tu. Yes, yeah, son of, I'm sorry, Anuni Tu. Okay, son of Anuni Tu, the fire of the gods. The decision maker spoke to him. Powerful Gira, remember Gira is the fires of God. Powerful Gira, ferocious Gira, your attack cannot be deflected. Burn Anzu with fire. Your weapon, your name shall be great in the Anunnaki assembly. You shall have no rival among the gods, your brothers. Then surely shall shrines be created. Establish your cult centers all over the four corners, all over the four quarters. Your cult centers shall enter the Eker. Show prowess to the gods, and your name shall be powerful. Gibbo Gira answered their speech addressing his words to Anu, his father. Father, who could rush off to the inaccessible mountain? I can. And I'm coming with you. And we'll be inaccessible together. I got something you can come to. <laughs> I got to Goodbye. Go. I'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> father, who could rush off to the inaccessible mountain? Which of the gods, your sons, will be Anzu's conqueror? For he has gained the tablets of destinies for I himself. <laughs> <laughs> for he has gained the tablets of destinies for himself. He has taken away the Enlil ship. The rites are abandoned. His utterance has replaced the Duranki's God. He has only to command and whoever he curses turns to clay. At his utterance, the gods must now tremble. He turned away saying that he would not make the expedition. They call Ishar Ishtar's own. He also turned away, saying he would not make the expedition. The gods fell silent and despaired of advice. Here we are. Two minutes. Oh, we may not finish this. Yeah, we ain't gonna finish it because I gotta stop in a couple minutes. Literally in a couple minutes. Inki, the Lord of Intelligence, wise one who dwells in the deep. Inki formed an idea in the depths of his being. Inky formed intelligence in his heart. He told Anu what he was thinking in his inmost being. Let me give orders and search among the gods and pick from the Anunnaki assembly Anzu's conqueror. I myself shall search among the EGG gods and pick from the Anunnaki assembly Anzu's conqueror. The EGG listened to this speech of his mouth. The EGG were free from anxiety and kissed his feet. The far-sighted one made his voice heard and spoke. 
addressing his words to Anu and Dagan. Have them call for me, Bel et Ili, sister of the gods, wise counselor of the gods, her brothers. Have them announce her supremacy in the assembly. Have the gods honor her in their assembly. I shall then tell her the idea which is in my heart. They call for Bel et Ili, sister of the gods to him, wise counselor of the gods, her brothers. They announced her supremacy in the Anunnaki assembly. The gods honored her in their assembly. They did, Enki, tell the idea in the depths of his inmost being. Previously, we used to call you mommy, but now your name shall be mistress of all gods. Offer the powerful one, your superb beloved, broad of chest, who forms the battle array. Give Ninurta your superb beloved, broad of chest, who forms the battle array. Then shall his name be Lord in the Anunnaki assembly. Let him show prowess to the gods that his, that his may be powerful. Let his name be made great. Let his name be made great in all the populated lands. His cult centers shall enter the Ikur. And then it says a couple fragmentary lines. Mommy listened to this speech of his. She uttered a supreme yes. The gods of the land rejoiced at her utterance. The Ejiji were free from, exi from anxiety and kissed her feet. She called to her son in the Anunnaki assembly and instructed him, saying, In the presence of Anu and Dagan, they announced the course of their rights in the assembly. I gave birth to all the Ejiji. I created every single one of the Anunnaki, and I created the Anunnaki assembly. I, Mommy, assigned the Enlil ship to my brother. Anzu has disrupted the kingship that I designated. He has obtained for himself the Tablet of Destinies. He has robbed Enlil, rejected your father, stole the abandoned rights, and turned them to his use. And that is where we are going to pause at for today, beautiful people. And we'll pick up the rest of this tablet tomorrow, which we'll finish it because it's really not that much left. But... I really have to pause right here for today. All right, beautiful people. It is Friday. Hold on, brother. Hey, Emma. It is Friday, April the first. Twenty twenty two, day number seventy of year four, reading through the books of the law and the prophets, and of the four year consecutive day count, day one thousand eighty eight. We read the first part of Tablet V. In the complete Anunnaki Bible, starting on page 337, all the way to page 346. And like I said, we'll read the rest of this tomorrow. And we will read um, the next little small chapter of My Big Toe. And then Sunday, we should be completely done with My Big Toe. And shucks, by the end of next week, we'll be done. Oh, yeah, because a lot of this is just showing like the sigils. Okay, yeah, we'll be done with the complete Anunnaki Bible probably by this time next week, probably by next Saturday. If not before then, like seriously, if not before then, okay, yeah. So then we start in two new books, right? We're gonna start in the Oaspi. Y'all are really gonna enjoy that. Y'all really are, right? You really get some further understanding of what we learn in scripture, and well, I, I guess you can call it scripture too in the Torah, right? Throughout the Bible, books of the Law and the Prophets, it's gonna make some things a little more clear. Right? Uh oh, hold on. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna make a lot of things a little more clear. Well at least for me, with all the um at least for me it has with all the hold on to you. Okay, there you go. Thank you. With all the research and stuff that I've done. Also just a quick note, um remember the astrology chart that I post in the comment not the comment section in the the community section. I posted on the Awaken to Truth page. Remember, I started sharing it every month just to remind you about the days that you should fast. You can consider fasting. Remember, we talked about it in depth a couple months ago about why. And I gave like a quick little blurb every time I post it. When I talked about it, then I started posting it, but I posted it without an explanation. New people come in and ask about, okay, why am I posting astrology charts? But they missed a couple. Actually, I did a couple videos where we talked about it. Um, so I went back and pulled some of my notes that I had 
for each of those days and I kind of made it into one post and I posted it. I'm now posting it every time I post a chart. I'm not posting it for y'all to get all off into deep astrology, y'all. Granted, the way it's being taught, just the reason why I'm just keep it short today because I really don't have time to get into it. But if you were here, you understand I'm posting it to remind you of the days like whatever your sun sign is and like I said, I really don't have time to explain it. If you were born, like, I was born March the 30th, I'm an Aries, right? But there is some wisdom that I found in my travels over the last few years, checking out different things, going into different closets and stuff, and looking at information that's there and testing some information, separating the good from the bad. I'm not saying take everything from astrology and use it. Don't go off the deep end, people. I'm just trying to find the pieces of the puzzle that are true. When I find something that I think is useful, I will test it. If it's not as useful as I originally thought, I would do away with it and I just put it I put it to the side. If I don't if I don't completely trash it all together, I'll sit it to the side because it may be a piece of the puzzle that fits somewhere else. It just doesn't fit right here. But because I spent all this time doing different types of fasts, I found that what I found with the astrology chart and simply looking at the days, I still don't quite understand why it works, but it friggin' works. Whatever your sun sign is, just to make a long story short, whatever your sun sign is, when the moon passes through the phase where your sun sign is, and you, like I said, you may not know all the details and all the theory behind it, the best way, if you don't have the time to research it, the best way is just to test it. Nothing can, nothing wrong can happen to you by fasting, people. That's the point, first of all. Fasting will only make you better. Why do y'all keep putting numbers up here? You did. Oh, Misha. <laughs> okay. Oh, you keeping my time like, girl, log off. Okay. So I'm at 37 minutes now. Okay. I'm like, okay. But I did. I want to hit this point because a couple people asked. Um, I'm not going to do another video on it because I don't I don't want to take the videos into a place that I never intended for them to go. I'm simply sharing small bits of information that I found to be useful. If it's not useful to you just yet, don't worry about it. Let it fly. Keep on growing on your path, you know. But as you add fasting, uh, as you make fasting a regular habit in your life, you're going to begin to notice some things. And that's just something I began to notice. Just like when you when you calculate the Sabbath day and you actually rest on that Sabbath day with a Sabbath day, um, not like every Friday, every Saturday, but I found that when you line up with the appropriate Sabbath day, there's this different type of rest that happens not only to your body, but also to your spirit. And that's what I found out in my studies of the book of Enoch and the constellations. And I, start, I started getting into it by reading through the book of Enoch when he was going through the constellations and the luminaries. And I just really took a, a big like into it. And it was really interesting, which caused me to start checking into some stuff. You know, with the sky, the time clock in the sky, and then adding fast into it, I was like, well, wait a minute, there, there's some truth to this right here, right? So some things they put out there for the masses, they mix truth with error, but it's incumbent upon you to actually go taste the pudding and do your own due diligence and test different things. Keep what's good, separate it from the bad, you know, get rid of the bad, keep the things that are good and profitable for your growth, right? So I get some people... They still, everything is of the devil's new age, going to lead you off into the wrong path. I get all of that. And thank you for looking out for me. I, I really appreciate that. But if you've missed some of the stuff I've talked about and why I even posted it, I can get why you would, you know, try and warn me. I appreciate it, though. But I just want to reiterate, I'm sharing it, not for y'all to get off deep into astrology. That's not why I'm sharing it. It's simply for the fast days because I wasn't sharing it at first. But at, when I started talking about it, People were inboxing me and sending me emails. Hey, can you post it? I was like, well, you know, you can download the app. And so you can actually have it on your phone. Um, but some people don't have access to it and they can just like get online. So I was like, okay. So I'll just screenshot it every month and I'll share it, you know, because if they don't have access to the internet that way, at least they can see it this way. So that's why beautiful people. All right. 
there all right i'm at 40 minutes all right gotta go all right y'all i love y'all thank y'all thank y'all for hanging out i will see y'all back here 7 30 tomorrow like 7 30 is the real time tomorrow saturday i'm gonna be on time because it's saturday ain't got nothing to do mornings are just getting more hectic for me all right so i'll see y'all back here tomorrow morning may y'all continue to bless the work of your hands have a peaceful day i'll see y'all back here 7 30 bright and early eastern time tomorrow morning Bruce.